All right, so this is Vodcast 2 of Unit 1. Uh, last time we looked at the Earth uh, sciences, and then we also looked at the, uh, the scientific method. This time we're going to look at the Earth spheres, and hopefully after this and the activity that goes along with it, you're going to be able to describe the four main spheres of the Earth and their relative sizes to one another. So let's just jump right into the spheres. Uh, <clears throat> these are all interactive. So they're not independent of one another, they, they interact, one can affect the other. And the first one we're going to look at here is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just that very thin blanket of uh, gas that surrounds the Earth. It contains all the weather, uh, it allows us to breathe, and it protects us from harmful rays from the sun. The ozone layer specifically protects us from the UV light. And as far as composition-wise, the main gas in our atmosphere is nitrogen, uh, followed by oxygen, water vapor, and other things like carbon dioxide, methane, uh, ozone, and so on. The next sphere is the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is just all of the water, whether that be in the oceans, whether it be in glaciers, groundwater, rivers, streams, lakes, you name it, the hydrosphere contains all the water. And you can go through the water cycle and discuss that, which I won't go into. I'm sure you all have heard of that before and, and understand it uh, in its basics. The next sphere, you have the biosphere. The biosphere is containing all the life, uh, as simple as that. Any living creature from the smallest microbe up to the largest uh, that's in the biosphere. And last but not least, you have the geosphere. Now the geosphere is just basically all of the uh, solid earth underneath your feet. All right, from the crust down. Now there are a couple layers that we're gonna go through uh, here in a minute, but again, all those systems affect one another. The atmosphere can affect what kind of rocks are being made. Uh, the kind of rocks will affect uh, the, the landscape, and the landscape can affect what's living there. These are all interactive. So let's just do a quick set of layers and be done with this vodcast. Now we live on the crust of the earth, and there are really two types of crust. You have the continental crust that we have, uh, which is kind of light and buoyant, floats up on top of the ocean crust. Ocean crust is thicker, uh, excuse me, is denser, and we'll get into the specifics on why uh, later on. Below that though, as you get deeper, you get into the layer known as the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is where part of it starts to get a little bit melted. All right, not all of it, just a little bit of it. And it starts to flow and shift and change. Now, when you go below that, you actually get into what's known as the mantle. The mantle is the thickest layer in the crust, or excuse me, in the earth. And the mantle is not liquid. It's still solid. Most people want to call it a liquid because they see volcanoes and volcanoes made out of lava and they think lava comes from just in the mantle. There's only a small parts of the mantle that are actually liquid. It's still solid. You can kind of think of it as plasticky or wax. Uh, wax can flow, but it's still a solid. You go below that, you get into the core. Uh, the outer core is actually liquid. It's the only liquid layer. Uh, as you get lower and deeper, the pressure increases so much that it takes that liquid and crushes it back into a solid, where you get the inner core. So there are the layers of the geosphere. You've got the uh, continental crust, the oceanic crust, the asthenosphere, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. And tomorrow you're gonna to do a little activity in class that you will draw out these layers uh, to scale and see what their relative thicknesses are. 